For 30 years, I've had the privilege to work on one of the grandest missions in the solar system, the Cassini mission to Saturn. And those 30 years of my life have intertwined with Cassini's. And in fact, it's been just a remarkable journey and discovery. Uh, Cassini discovered two liquid oceans on the moons of Saturn. And those oceans might have life that exists there to today. As I said, I've been with Cassini from the very beginning, and if you look at the picture in back of me, there's the Cassini spacecraft against Saturn and its rings. Now, I'm going to tell you about Cassini in the context of my own life story. And so during the 30 years I worked on Cassini, my husband Tom and I raised our two daughters. There's Jennifer in the middle and Jessica over on the left. And so that's been part of my life as well. Well, here's a very enthusiastic Cassini family, and it's a family, an international family of scientists and engineers from around the world. About 600 of them planning the science for Cassini and sharing in Cassini's discoveries. And one of the surprises we had is we also got to answer some of the questions, basic questions from humanity. Are we alone? Could there be life in our own solar system? And can we try and find it? And that's been part of Cassini's mission. Here are the eight planets in our solar system, you know, starting out from the sun, the four rocky planets. Saturn is the sixth planet out from the sun and has magnificent rings and 62 moons. Now Saturn is a gas giant. The atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium. And all we see are the cloud tops of Saturn. Now to give you an idea of just how big Saturn is, here's the Earth and the moon to scale and the distance between them. And Saturn and its rings would just fit in between the Earth and the moon. Can you imagine a night sky with Saturn and the rings visible in that sky? Well, the idea for Cassini first came after the two Voyager flybys in the early 1980s. Voyager opened our eyes to incredible questions about Saturn and its moons and rings. And so we started to plan a mission to go back. And about the time the idea for Cassini was conceived, I had my first daughter, Jennifer. Three years later, I had Jessica. And it was during that time that I went back to school and got my PhD studying the complex interactions of ring particles at Saturn using Voyager data, part of the project I had worked on as well. Well, in 1990, NASA selected instruments for the Cassini spacecraft, shown over on the left, the, the Huygens probe in the center there. And if you look very carefully on your, on your right, you can see the Huygens probe actually attached to the Cassini spacecraft. And during the seven years that it took to build Cassini, there were growing pains for Cassini, just as you'd have growing pains in a family. And what I really enjoyed is the opportunity to take my daughters to see Cassini as it was put together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. And here's my daughter, Jessica, and I were in the clean room at JPL, standing in front of the Cassini spacecraft. We were also there for the launch as a family. Cassini launched in 1997. We stood there as the roar of the rockets could literally be felt in your bones, watching as the rocket lifted off the launch pad and started into space. Now, some people might say one of the greatest accomplishments of that day was successfully launching Cassini. But let me tell you, getting two teenage daughters up before dawn <laughs> to go watch the launch was a great achievement in and of itself. Well, in the 13 years we were at Saturn, we got to watch the seasons change. And the seasons changed in my life as well. We arrived at Saturn in the summer. You could see the ring, where it was winter in the northern hemisphere, you could see the ring shadow in the north. At equinox, you could just barely see the ring shadow at the equator. And in the end of the mission, it was winter in the southern hemisphere. Now, you can use the ring shadow like a giant sundial on Saturn. By looking at Saturn and seeing the ring shadow, you know the seasons at Saturn. It takes Saturn 30 years to circle the sun a single time. So a season at Saturn is 7.5 years long. And so Cassini was there really only for just two seasons. And during those 13 years at Saturn, uh, my daughters Jennifer and Jessica graduated from college with degrees in engineering. They both got jobs 
and they both got married. Ah, uh, here's a picture of the rings, one of my favorite pictures, Saturn's rings. Saturn is all the way over on the edge off the screen there. Let me take you on a walk through the rings. First of all, you have the A ring here on this side, then the very bright B ring in the center. Saturn's rings range in size from tiny marbles to giant mountains. In between is the Cassini division, named after the astronomer who discovered this gap in Saturn's rings and for which the Cassini mission is named as well. As you continue across, the darker grayish ring is the C ring, and finally, the very, very faint D ring, all the way over on the edge there. And now if we zoom in on this tiny dark line here, that's a gap in Saturn's rings. And if we zoom in, that gap is created by the gravity of a tiny moon, Daphnis. The Keeler gap is held open by the gravity of Daphnis. And you can see that Daphnis has created a beautiful wave of ring particles, much like the waves on a beach. Now you see other areas of brightness here. Let's zoom in on one of those with Cassini's cameras and see what those might be. Turns out those are giant waves propagating hundreds of kilometers through the rings. There's a gravitational interaction between a moon outside the rings and this place in the rings. And so the ring particles transmit like a wave. It's like the ringing of a bell as this structure propagates through the rings. And this was part of what I studied for my thesis. So I happen to think these are very, very beautiful pictures of Saturn and its rings. Now that moon in front of Saturn, that's Saturn's moon Titan. Titan is a large moon. It's larger than the planet Mercury. Had Titan formed anywhere else in the solar system, it would have been a planet. Titan has a thick, nitrogen-rich atmosphere, much like the Earth's atmosphere, and also has methane. And methane is unique. Methane plays the role on Titan that water plays on the Earth. Methane can form clouds. Methane can rain. Methane carves river channels in the icy surface of Titan and fills the lakes and seas at the North Pole. And we wonder, could there be a very unique and different kind of life that could use liquid methane instead of liquid water there in the lakes on Titan? Now, Titan also has a global liquid water ocean underneath its icy crust, and perhaps life could exist there as well. Now, to pierce through that haze, that's a photochemical smog, that methane gets broken apart by sunlight and forms a smog just like you'd find on a bad day in LA or Beijing. So we carried the Huygens probe provided by the European Space Agency to parachute through the atmosphere and land on the surface. And here's a movie from the Huygens probe, two and a half hour journey under a parachute to the surface of Titan. Cassini flew overhead as Huygens transmitted the data to Cassini. Huygens measured the composition of the atmosphere, the temperature, pressure, and also took these wonderful images. We saw river channels, we saw mountains. We were seeing the surface of Titan for the very first time. And as we landed, we noticed rounded icy pebbles. Water flowing in rivers and streams on Earth round the rocks on Earth, and we knew here liquid had flowed on Titan. Huygens had landed in a dry riverbed, and what a great introduction. We had radar also to pierce through the haze and make maps of the surface of this very interesting moon. This is a view of another moon, Enceladus. Enceladus is only 500 kilometers across, about one-tenth the size of Titan. But Enceladus was unusual because it was so bright and white and fresh and young-looking, and you can see places on Enceladus have no craters. What we discovered is that there were four long fractures. This is the south pole of Enceladus. And coming out of those fractures were water vapor and water ice particles shooting out into space, geysers coming out of the south pole of Enceladus. We were so surprised. Many of the largest particles fall back to the surface, just like the snow that we experienced earlier in the week here in Davos. And that covers up and fills in the craters and gives Enceladus that bright, youthful appearance. Here's another view of the South Pole, this time backlit by the sun, and you can see 30 individual jets going up into space. Cassini flew through those jets seven times, tasting and sampling the composition of this material. And we found that the liquid water ocean underneath Enceladus's icy crust was salty, just like the Earth's ocean. It was filled with hydrocarbons. 
We also saw evidence of hydrothermal vents on the seafloor. And so we wonder, could this ocean on this tiny moon perhaps be a habitat for life? Now, Cassini, we, ne we had no idea when we launched Cassini that we might find worlds that might contain life. So we didn't carry any instruments to look. So it will take a mission to go back to Enceladus to answer that question. I'd like to be part of that mission if they go back. Now, over 300 years ago, a, sc a sculptor actually put together a different Enceladus. And here, at Enceladus, shooting water upward. And here's a view. This is a, a picture that I took of a fountain in the gardens of Versailles. And so you can see Enceladus, out of his mouth is coming this jet of water going over 25 meters into the air. And how surprised this sculptor would be to realize that the real Enceladus is doing exactly that. This is one of my very favorite pictures. You can see tiny Enceladus um, here in the E-ring, the very tiniest particles actually go on and create this beautiful ring around Saturn. You can see Saturn with its halo of rings. Now, it's not easy to get a picture like this. You have to have a solar eclipse. And in this case, Saturn is covering up the sun so we can get this glorious view of Saturn and its rings. And there's actually something else in this picture. It turns out if you look carefully, this tiny dot right here is the Earth and the Moon. So we're getting a picture of our own planet from 1.5 billion kilometers away. And this picture just makes me appreciate how precious this world is, the only world we know of that has life. And we now think that perhaps two other worlds, Enceladus and Titan, might be potential habitats for life. And as Cassini was running out of fuel, that told us that we had to be careful once Cassini was out of fuel not to allow her to run into either Enceladus or Titan. So our engineers found a way to go in between the gap between the rings and the planet. 22 orbits we labeled the grand finale to get back incredible science and on the final orbit to end the mission. Now imagine yourself holding on tight to Cassini and I'm going to show you a little movie of one of those orbits. So here you go over the north pole of Saturn, 120,000 kilometers per hour, diving between the rings and the planet. And imagine the incredible detail and the knowledge we got about Saturn and its rings. Diving between 22 times until finally on the final orbit, the Cassini mission ends. And on September 15th of last year, that was Cassini's last day. We were all gathered at JPL and I was there with my family again. And this is Jennifer and Jessica. And this time my granddaughter Audrey was there as we watched the end of Cassini. And it was really a very bittersweet moment because we had such triumphs and such success with Cassini. And yet it was very hard to say goodbye to such a dear friend. And tears flowed and we hugged each other and you know, went on and thought about what were the next possibilities. Well, I'd like to show you a video and this is about the wonders of Saturn. It's the pictures taken by Cassini set to music. Think of it as the, post, the picture postcards from Cassini to the people of Earth.
Now to truly, truly reveal the wonder. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. To truly reveal the wonder of Saturn, we had to go there. And I personally would like to go back. You see, missions like Cassini help us bring hope to a fractured world as together we experience the beauty and the grandeur beyond Earth. Thank you.